Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So today's video is going to be covering an issue that's come up quite frequently in the community and that's where people have had uh, glitchy screens with the Ender 3 after doing firmware upgrades. I believe it also applied to pretty much anything using the 422 board, um, but I'm not entirely sure on that. So first let's talk about the problem here. The main problem is people see a glitchy screen kind of like this after people upgrade the firmware, whether it be to some of the Creality builds or to some of the builds I have or other pre-built builds across the internet. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's causing it. My best guess is it's related to the change with the 422 builds moving over to the 256K chips, and most of the builds are based on the 512K, though the memory consumption on most of the builds that I've seen and the ones I've built myself is still under the 256, so I'm not entirely sure if that's the issue, but that's kind of what things are pointing to. Either that or there was a screen upgrade uh, between uh, one of my older printers and some of the new ones out there. So with this printer here, I got this one earlier last year. It's got the 422 board, uh, 512K chip, and I can flash pretty much any firmware that I've come across that supports that board without any issues. Um, but like I said, this has come up in the community quite a bit with that screen. So I went ahead and built some uh, 256K uh, builds and put them on my website, which I'll jump over to the computer and show you how to get them here in a second. Uh, with that, that tends to fix most of the issues that I've seen, if not all of them. I think anybody who's used this build afterwards, it got rid of the issue. So that either points back to, again, um, the chip change or potentially something in the screen, but I don't think it's the screen, uh, but I can't say that for sure. So the main issue I'm having here, uh, the reason why I can't say for sure, is my printer, like I said, is working with any build I throw at it. So unless I get a newer one, which I might be getting if things continue the way they are, I just can't do the proper testing to say for sure what the actual root cause of the issue is. All I can say for sure is that I have worked with at least a dozen plus people in the community and provided them the build that I now have on my website and it fixed the issue for them. Uh, so I would recommend going with that build if you're starting to see the issue. We'll go ahead and jump over to the website here in a second, but I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, these firmware builds, along with my Cura profiles, are free. They're not behind any paid wall or any type of sign up or anything like that. You just go to the site and download them. I'm not asking for email addresses or anything like that. So if you are running into the screen issue, um, trying this firmware definitely doesn't hurt. And most likely it will fix the issue that you're having. I also provide the config files that I use as a base point uh, in case you wanted to take those and modify it and make something of your own. They are built based on the latest bug fix release. So if a new uh, version of the config comes out, you will have to uh, move those over to the new version of that config. So just update the values. But I'm gonna try to keep them up to date as much as I can. And if there's any other changes you guys think should be added to the base firmware build, Builds that I don't already have in there, uh, go and leave a comment below and let me know. All right, so before we go ahead and jump over to the computer, if you guys haven't already, uh, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. It'll really help us grow. Thanks. All right, guys, so we're here at the computer. I've got my firmware page up. If we go ahead and scroll down, uh, you'll see where I have the firmware for the Ender 3s. Um, the Ender 3 uh, 422 board specifically here, I've got that for the uh, Ender 3 Pro, the Ender 3. And I just need to update the V2, but I'll have that available pretty soon if you do have the 422 board in the V2. But that's typically going to be silent, so that's going to be a little bit different. I'm not sure if that chipset changed. That's why I haven't actually updated that one specifically yet. Um, but if you're running into the issue with the glitchy screen, uh, you'll want to download uh, this 256K version. Depending upon what you're trying to do, uh, you can either download the one that is just a straight Marlin build, uh, the one that's for the BL Touch with the standard wiring, that means all five wires go to the BL Touch port and the Z stop is still connected. Or you can get the BL Touch Z homing firmware, which means that you have your three servo wires going to the BL Touch port and then the probe stop connected to where the Z uh, stop port would be at and your Z stop not connected. Uh, so I'll go ahead and download one of these and show you what it looks like real quick. Inside the zip, you just got another folder just specifying what it is. And then in there, you've got the firmware file, which is the .bin file, and then the configuration and configuration.h files. Um, like I mentioned in the video earlier, that these are really uh, just for examples. If you want to get to the same starting point, uh, every change that I made is included in these files, so you can use as as a starting point for another build. Or if you're getting a later version of the firmware, you can take the config changes that I made out of here and put those into the newer version of the config and then build from there. But I'll try to keep things up to date as much as possible. If you guys have any issues with this firmware, uh, please go ahead and reach out and let me know. I'll try to keep this stuff up to date as much as possible. 
Uh, but it does take time to get some of the stuff out here. So it's not something that I'll be updating weekly. But if there are issues, I'll make sure to address those as soon as possible. But that's really all there is to it. This build fixed the issue for about 12 people so far. Um, so I'm pretty sure it should be good for you guys. But if you run into issues, just let me know. All right, guys. So that covers how to get the firmware that I built that uh, fixes the issue with the glitchy screen. Um, again, it's free. If you're having the issue, just go ahead and give it a try. It should fix the issue. If not, uh, please go ahead and reach out to me and comment below or on Discord. And I would like to kind of drill into it and see if we can get to a root cause. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm having a hard time figuring out what the actual main issue is because I don't have a printer that's doing it, which makes it difficult to really get to the root cause of anything. But I was able to um, build a firmware that does fix the issue for you guys and I went ahead and put it on my site. Again, no charge for any of that. It's not behind a paywall or anything like that. Same with my Cura profiles. Uh, so if you're interested or just curious, go ahead and give them a try. It doesn't really hurt. And if you have any questions or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.